Hey there everybody, welcome back to Bench Proof. My name is David. Today we're going to be making an oatmeal bread, which I personally love oatmeal bread. It's got a lot of nutrition in there, but today we're going to do a little bit of a twist on there. We're going to make an oatmeal bread with orange inside of it. This bread is great for breakfast, making up for toast or anything like that. It's got a lot of new nutrition packed into that bread, which is going to be a little bit healthier for you than doing just a regular piece of wheat bread as your toast or a piece of white bread as your toast. This has got oranges, oatmeals, both of which have a lot of good nutrients inside of them. Sorry about that, my oven just got done preheating. Uh, they've got a lot of good nutrients inside of them. They're a little bit healthier and they go great with breakfast because they've got oranges and oatmeal and all those breakfast flavors already baked right into the bread. Uh, we've got a little bit different set of circumstances here than we normally do. We, we're working with you know fresh fruits, and things like that. So I'm going to walk you all the way through all the different steps that we've done or that we will do that we have not done in the past. And as you probably heard, the first step is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. This is a chemically leavened bread, which means that it uses baking soda and baking powder, no yeast, which means that there's no rise time that you have to worry about. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is preheat that oven. That way it is at temperature and ready to go by the time we get done assembling all of the components here and that bread is ready to go into the oven. So what we're going to get started with is we've got one, uh, you know, fresh orange. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the zest off of this orange and we're going to be using that in the bread as well. And for that, I use a, some people call it a microplane grater or a micro grater or just a microplane. What it is basically just one strip of metal with very small holes in there, a lot smaller than like a, say a box grater would have. These come in very handy, not only for zesting any kind of citrus, but also grating fresh nutmeg into a recipe or even fresh ginger. They're very, uh, or even Parmesan cheese, instead of using the little bitty holes on the side of your box grater, this works much better at grating Parmesan cheese. Um, it's very useful. If you don't have one, I'd suggest getting one, but if you don't have one, don't want to, don't have the money, I understand. I'll show you a little trick that you can use to get the zest from the orange a little bit later on if you don't want to use uh, this system. So first thing that we're going to do is we've got a bowl here to catch our zest and we're just going to zest the entire orange all the way around. You want to make sure that you get only the orange part and you leave the white part underneath. That is called the pith and it is incredibly bitter, not good for any kind of culinary use at all and you want to make sure that you keep as much of that as possible out of your zest. And this microplane grater has teeth going uh, both directions, so it's not just one way. You get double the, uh, double the zest off. It makes it go a lot faster. And because zesting an entire orange can take a little bit of time, so I'll get to it and I'll be right back once I get done. All right, now we've got all of the zest off of our orange and you want to make sure to get as much of the zest as possible off of this because in that zest is where you've got your citrus oils and a lot of your essential uh, flavors of the orange. It packs a lot of flavor into a very small package. And what we're going to do next is we're going to actually make orange supremes, which is where you get the segments out of the orange without having any of the membrane or anything like that. And I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, so to make orange supremes, what you're going to do is you're going to cut a little bit off of the bottom and a little bit off of the top, and that's just going to give you a flat, stable platform to you know have your orange. And then you're going to take your knife and you're going to run it all along the outside to get the peel off without with leaving as much of the meat inside intact as you possibly can. It's a little bit tricky; takes a little bit of you know time to get used to it. You say obviously mine are still not not perfect. I'm not you know looking to be Iron Chef here or anything like that. The main thing is just getting as much of this peel off as you can and leaving as much of the meat as you can on there. If there's a little bit, you know, if meat comes off with the peel, it happens. It's not that big a deal. You're still gonna get the majority of your of your meat from your orange. Okay, now that we've got our orange peeled, as you can see, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. I do not do this technique very often, so I've still got a lot of practice that I need to do to get it perfect. 
but we've gotten all of our peel off. We've gotten a good majority of the meat still on here. There's a little bit, you know, on some of the pieces like this. Not much though, um, not much waste. So now what we're gonna do, and I'll show you on this overhead one here. You're gonna see these membranes here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is run your knife down the side of those membranes. And that is going to cut out a segment of orange and it's gonna leave the tougher membranes there so that those do not get in the bread. And you're gonna do that all the way uh, around this orange, get all the segments out, leave all the membranes and seeds that you can. And then we will get back to you on the very next step. Okay, I've got all of my orange slices cut out and they're ready to go on to the next step. There's a couple of little seeds in there. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you pick those out uh, you know, as best as you can. And if you need to trim off a little bit of the membrane you know, after you take the segment out, that's perfectly fine too not looking for perfection on your first try at all. Um, I forgot to show you the little trick to get the zest. If you don't have a microplane grater or you don't want to use a microplane grater, what you can do is skip straight to this step where we cut the top and the bottom off and then cut the peel off of the orange. And what you can do is you can take your knife and all with the back side, it's harder to do now since the zest is gone. What you can do is you can, uh, you can rub the back side of your knife and that'll scrape, uh, scrape away the pith there, like I said, it's harder to show on this one because it's nothing but pith, um, but it scrapes all the pith away and then you're left with, you know, just a slice of zest and then you can just cut that up with the knife, you know, to make it smaller like what our microplane grater makes. It's a little bit more complicated, um, you got to have a little bit better knife skills uh, to be able to do that, but like I said, if you just don't want to get one or you don't have the money to get one, you can still make this exact same recipe perfectly fine. Some people use a box grater. I personally try not to do that because a box grater's got deeper teeth on it, so it tends to get more pith than zest, uh, just because it makes a deeper cut into the actual piece of fruit itself. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our orange slices that we just got, put it into the same bowl with our zest, and then I'm going to add two tablespoons of just regular old sugar. I'm just kind of stir those up with my hand a little bit. And what this is going to do is, this is a technique called macerating. We're going to macerate these oranges here, make them a little bit sweeter, bring out their juices, and we're going to let them sit, and then we're going to assemble the next couple ingredients. I'm going to clear off my uh, cutting tray here though, and then I'll be right back for the next sequen uh, sequence of events. Alright, now that I've cleared my cutting board out of the way and washed my hands a little bit, uh, the next step is I have here uh, two tablespoons of melted butter and I'm going to add two eggs to that and then beat the eggs together with the butter. Alright, I'm just going to take a fork and beat those together real quick. You want to make sure that after you melt your butter, you let it cool just a little bit after it comes out of either the saucepan or the microwave, whatever you're using to melt your butter. You don't want to add your eggs straight to hot butter. You want to cool it down enough so that it's still melted and still, you know, still liquid, but not so hot that it's going to automatically curdle your eggs and give you scrambled eggs inside of your bowl. With the same fork, what I'm now going to do is the, the oranges have been sitting in the sugar mixture for a little while and I'm just going to take this fork and just kind of mash them up, mash them against the side and kind of cut them into small pieces. You can cut your orange slices into smaller pieces uh, before you put them in the sugar. Actually, you're supposed to, but I forgot to. So, I'm just going to cut them up into small pieces with this fork here. They're softer now that they've been sitting in the sugar, so they're still going to break apart. And especially since we got most of the membrane off from around them, it's just the soft fruit that's left. So you're not having to worry about cutting through any hard membranes you know, with the fork or anything like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our egg and butter mixture to our orange and sugar mixture and just combine those. At this point we're just combining all the wet ingredients. That's all this is. Okay so that was our wet mixture. In this bowl we have our dry mixture and that mixture is one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, 
one tablespoon of baking powder, one half teaspoon of salt, one quarter teaspoon of baking soda, one cup of rolled oats, and that's going to be our dry mix. As you can see, I've just got them all in the same bowl here, just kind of mix them around a little bit just to get everything incorporated with each other. And then we're going to add our wet ingredients, our orange butter sugar mixture, as well as two thirds of a cup of warm water. Just gonna mix all that together to get it incorporated. Okay, we've got all of our ingredients mixed up here very well. It's a very wet batter, which is fine because it's gonna be a steam risen loaf, so you want it to be fairly wet. I forgot to mention that there's also three quarters of a cup of additional sugar in the dry ingredients. So you have the two tablespoons that went on to the oranges, you have three quarters of a cup that goes into the dry ingredients as well. But now we've got that all mixed up. Gonna take a, I take a nine by five, you can either do a nine by five, that'll make one loaf, or you can do uh, two smaller loaves in like a seven by three pan. Um, and you can, that way if you're not gonna go through it as fast, you can freeze one whole loaf and then work on the other loaf. My brother loves this bread though, my roommates love this bread, so it goes by pretty fast. So I just make one 9 by 5 loaf. Um, I've already coated it down the exact same way that we have in all of our other videos. It's just that baker spray, that's no stick spray with flour already integrated into the spray. And then we're just going to put our mixture in. And then straight into the oven, you want to actually let it rest for about two or three minutes just so that the flour has time to hydrate a little bit. And then after about two or three minutes, put it into a 350 degree oven. You're going to bake it for about 45 minutes to an hour. And you're going to test it with a toothpick or a cake tester uh, right down the middle. Once it comes out clean, uh, you'll know that it's going to be done. I typically check mine at about 50 minutes. I let it go past the 45 and go to 50. Um, you know, but you want to come out clean and when we come back I'll show you what your finished loaf looks like, how to test for the doneness, and we'll wrap up. All right, everybody, welcome back. Our orange oatmeal bread is out of the oven, and I wish you could smell this. The whole house smells delicious. Um, as you can see, it's risen a little bit. It's not supposed to be up out of the pan or anything like that. Uh, it's got a nice golden brown color to it. We're gonna test it with a toothpick to make sure that it is completely baked. What you wanna do is you wanna take your toothpick and go right down into the middle and pull it out. See how there's really nothing on that toothpick there? There's a little bit of crumbs, but that is perfectly fine. If it wasn't done, it would still have a good bit of batter clinging to it. It would look completely, you know, almost completely covered with batter. Uh, little crumbs like that are not a problem at all. It's completely baked. What you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to let it sit in the pan for about a half an hour and then take it out of the pan, put it on the cooling rack, and then let it come to room temperature on the cooling rack before you cut it or, anything, or store it. Put it in a freezer bag. If you made two loaves, put one loaf in the freezer. Freeze is very nice. If not, if you did one loaf, or if you made two but want to use one of them, still put it in a Ziploc bag or just wrap it in. I wrap mine in aluminum foil and then just keep it out at room temperature. It'll keep for about three or four days. Um, once again, no preservatives in these, so they go stale and they go bad a lot faster than store-bought uh, store breads. 
So you're gonna to wanna to use it fairly quick or you can go ahead and slice it and then freeze the individual slices if you want to, um, if you made one loaf. That, that works perfectly fine too. I hope you really enjoyed this bread. If you've got an idea for a bread that you wanna see me make, please leave me a comment down below. Uh, thank you for watching the video. As always, uh, please leave me a like. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel for more how-to and instructional videos. Thank you very much for watching and have fun baking.